Hi, this is Steve at BlessedHopeForever.com. We're going to continue on in our study in uh, the epistle to the first Thessalonians, verse by verse. I want to say something before we begin here. What we are about to look at, what I'm about to talk to you about, what you're about to hear me say is probably, at least in my opinion, it's probably the uh, one of the most, and I don't, I'm not sure how to even say this, it's probably one of the most uh, deeply profound uh, messages concerning the believer's walk. That's been the context from the beginning of chapter 4. And I've spent some time with you folks. I've spent some time sharing with you my understanding of what I believe is our instruction concerning how the believer is to walk. Now there's an enormous amount of stuff that can be said when it comes to this. First and primarily, first and foremost, we need to understand that we are not under law, but grace. And we need to hold that thought in mind as we go through the entire New Testament that was written for the church, uh, particularly Pauline's epistles, the Pauline epistles, uh, Romans through Jude. To keep that in the forefront of our mind as we go through our, our study, our own personal reading and study of God's Word, because it is my belief that the Holy Spirit designed, God designed Scripture be written in such a way as to where that unless a believer is, has been born, unless a person's been born again by the will of God from above, unless they are indeed a member of His body, the church, unless they are being led, guided, taught by the Holy Spirit. They're not going to really understand how to approach verses in the New Testament in which we're told to either not do something or to do something. Let me, let me just kind of play devil's advocate here for a moment. If, if, if I could. Just to kind of recap chapter 4. Uh, up, up to what, what we're, we're, to where we're at right now. If I was to come up to you, walk up to you personally, would just meet you on the street or meet you in some place, meet you at church, meet you in your home. If I was to just sit down and talk with you and say, now look. You say that you're a Christian. All right, you need to walk in a way that's pleasing to God. You need to, in fact, you need to abound more and more in that. You need to keep the commandments of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you need to abstain from fornication. If, if I was to just begin, even just to begin, okay, saying all this, then right away before I've even hardly gone any to any distance with you if if you had if you were a, any kind of a thinking person at all you would automatically just um, you would immediately realize that what I'm telling you that I think you ought to do I mean, I'm putting quite a load on you, 
okay? I mean, walk in a way that's pleasing to God. Abound more and more in that. Keep the commandments of the Lord. Well, that includes a lot. That's a lot, okay? Abstain from fornication. Possess your vessel in sanctification and in honor. I mean, my gosh, that covers a lot of territory, folks, okay? All right, are you with me on this? Don't defraud your brother in any matter. God called you unto holiness. He didn't call you unto uncleanness. He called you unto holiness. And you are to love the brethren more and more. Love them more and more. Even that brother that's hard to love. Now, I'm not done yet, okay? I'm not, by any means, and this is, we're just looking at a first, at a few verses in chapter 4. You're to study to be quiet. You're to mind your own business. Not, not butt into the other people's affairs. And you're to work with your own hands. I don't care what it is. I don't care whether you're a pastor, whether you're a, a, a plumber, a carpenter. You're to work with your own hands. And you're to do that so, and, and walk honestly toward those. Well, that, that's, that's quite a, a task, okay? And this, I want you to do this always. I always want you to do this. You're to walk honestly toward them that are without. I want you to walk blameless because that's, that's who you are. You're, you stand before God without fault. Blameless, holy, unblameable and unreprovable in His sight. That, that takes a, a certain amount of faith. All right, so it's not just doing stuff. It's actually believing God. So, you know, uh, and don't, don't rob one another of this, of this precious truth or there will be consequences in this life. You know, you do love one another. If, if, you, if, you're, not a, if you're not loving your brother, you're not born of God. So, but, but don't, don't butt into other people's business. Mind your own business and do this because you have been set apart by God for service. He set you apart. You didn't set yourself apart. It's God who is at work in you both the will and do of His good pleasure. You're not under law. You're under grace. You're to walk according to the Spirit, not according to the flesh. You're to yield to the Spirit, not the flesh. You're not to take the old man for a ride. You're, you're to be involved in everything that's good, righteous, holy, and my goodness gracious folks, I have, well, in a sense, I've just, I, if, I, if I just say to you that you need to do all that, well, then now I've just put you under law. But isn't that what Scripture is saying for us to do? Listen to me. Dearly beloved, if you, you can read Scripture as if we're under law. If, if that's what you want to do and if that's what you want to try to do and attempt to do that and accomplish all that in the flesh, if you think that's what God is telling you by telling you all this, let me tell you right now, you're sorely mistaken. It is the, one of the most gravest errors that a believer, a Christian can make is to just simply look at Scripture as, as something that, well, you just read it and do it. It's just that simple. Well, Steve, how do I love one? Just do it. Well, how do, how do I, you know, refrain from evil? How do I pursue that which is good? You know, how do, how do I do these things? How do I mind my own business? How do I work with my own hands? How do I abstain from fornication, from the fornication, which we know is law? How do I walk in a way that's pleasing to God? That's, that's how this chapter began. How do I walk in a way that God will be pleased with me, always pleased with me? Always. Always. Okay? Always. Well, first of all, He is. And that gets into the subject of the old man versus the new man. And that's what I want to talk about. We know that we're to walk according to the Spirit, not according to the flesh. If you were to ask me, Steve, well, how do we do that? I mean, it's the easy answer. The, the most simple answer is to, is to say, well, you know, uh, and it kind of goes should go without saying, 
most of you Christians who are mature in your thinking, you've come to understand that, that the way that we walk in the Spirit is, well, we just don't walk in the flesh. But let me tell you something. If I tell you that, I haven't told you very much. You have every right to come back and say to me, well, Steve, I, you, okay, I, I hear what you're saying, okay, to walk in the Spirit, we're to uh, not walk according to the flesh. The flesh profits nothing. But you still haven't told me how to walk in the Spirit. We can go around and around and around and back and forth all day long, folks, on this. Where that where the, you, you continue to ask me, how, how do I walk in? Yeah, but Steve, you're not telling me how. Don't tell me what unless you can tell me how. Okay? I need to know how. I need to know how that all of these things that we're seeing in this chapter and, and in all the rest of the New Testament, I need to understand, I need to see and come to understand how that these things are fulfilled in my life. Isn't there some condition? Isn't there some requirement? Some action, some decision on my part? I mean, don't I have a role in this? Well, yes, we do. And that role may surprise you. Even those of you who have been following this channel for some time and know that we're not under law, but we're under grace, that we've died to the law in order that we might live unto God, in order that we might bear fruit unto God. Unless we've died to the law, we cannot, cannot bear fruit unto God. Scripture is very clear on that. Why is that? Why is it that we're just not under law? Well, the, the, the most concise answer that I can give you is that we have the very fulfillment of the law living in and, and through us, in and through our lives. The very fulfillment of the law. He perfectly fulfilled the law, whereas we could not. Now we have Him living inside us. The question is, is how does the Lord Jesus Christ live His life in and through our lives? Now we can get into the subject of faith, and I've done this before. We've talked about how that, that righteousness is based on faith. It's faith's righteousness. So when we believe God, that... Actually, I, I, I guess what I could say is I could say faith exercised equals the righteousness of God. We also know that whatsoever is not of faith is sin. But we are commanded by God to walk according to the Spirit. But I'm going to tell you something, and I want you to listen very close to me. I've been a Christian for many years. And not once in all of, the, of those years, not once, has anybody ever, 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 ever told me how to walk in the Spirit. Never have. It usually comes around to, well, yeah, but you're not telling me how. how you're telling me to walk in the Spirit. Walk according to the Spirit, not according to the flesh. But you're not telling me how, so, so please tell me how. I'd really like to know how. Well, just do it. Just walk according to the... Just do it. Just walk according to the Spirit. Well, I hear what you're saying, but you're not really telling me how. I hope that you're following what I'm driving at here. Okay? Folks, there's something very important that we need to keep in mind as well as we study His Word, and as we walk in a way that's pleasing toward God. We need to understand that in the end, all of this, in the end, we will see that everything that, that touched our life, every bit of work that God did in our life, everything that, that, that defined the, the Christian life, which is not I but Christ, was intended so that no flesh would glory in His presence. We have no ability at all to claim, no right to claim credit, any credit 
at all, not, not by way of will, not by way of decision, not by way of passion, not by way of reasoning, not anything that we did, no decision on, my, on our part, no work on our part, nothing, nothing, and I emphasize nothing, okay, nothing. This is why we cast our crowns at His feet. Because everything that He did in and through us was a result of what He did. So look, this, is, this is really getting down to the crux of the matter here. And this is probably not something that, you've, that you're used to hearing from, up from your, the average pulpit ministry today. What I'm trying to drive at here, what I'm trying to explain to you people here is that this is something, this, this thing we call the Christian life is something much more profound than, than many of us have ever come to realize. Because what we're looking at, when we're looking at walking according to the, the Spirit, is we're, we're not looking at uh, some condition, some requirement on our part, if we will just do such and such, this, that, or the other thing, then, well, we're walking according to the Spirit. Please listen to me. Well, how do you, Steve, I, how do you walk according to the Spirit? Well, you just walk according to the Spirit. People are looking for something, something. They've got to grab on. They've got to lasso something. They've got to, to grab onto something, something, some vestige of human activity, some vestige of human goodness, some spark of human goodness, something there. There's got to be. There's got to be something. It, it can't possibly be. It can't, surely, Steve, it can't possibly be that well, have, you know, that we put the cart before the horse. That what we're looking at, when we read those words, walk according to the Spirit, we are actually looking at, it, and I'm not denying the fact that this is a command, but God fulfills what He commands. And He does that on the basis of the truth of His Word. Sanctify them in truth. Thy word is truth. You search the Scriptures daily, for you think that in them that you have life, but you will not come unto Me that you may have life, our Lord said. We read those words walking according to the Spirit, and we're just thrown back in, in our natural mind. We're thrown back to this, well, there's got to be something I do to be able to walk according to the Spirit. If, if we say that, if, and I've even said this myself, and perhaps I've misled many people by doing so. If I, if I say, if I just simply say, well, the way that we walk according to the Spirit is we don't walk according to the flesh, now I've just put you under law. I've told you just don't walk according to the flesh and in doing so you'll be walking according to the Spirit. I hope many of you are following me, my, my train of thought as I'm going through this. This is not easy. Believe me, this is not easy for me to describe. It's not easy. It's, it's enormously complicated and difficult for me to come out and just try to explain to you how that I believe that when we're looking at walking according to the Spirit, that we are actually looking at the result of God's work in our life, okay? Not, not some condition, some requirement, some mandate, some law, some standard, some, something that, that we do. Isn't it interesting that, that God never actually d said, well, here's what you do to walk according to the Spirit. I'm going to put something in front of that, and I'm going to say, if you do, if you do this and that or, or the other thing, then you'll be walking according to the Spirit. And God never did that, folks. He never did it. Never did it. 
He just says, walk according to the Spirit, and you won't fulfill the lusts of the flesh. He just simply gave us a command to do something, something that's literally, physically, naturally, humanly impossible. But we know that with God all things are possible. We know that the righteousness of the law is fulfilled in us. Why? Those who do not walk according to the flesh, that is law, but according to the Spirit. That the righteousness of the law is fulfilled in us. And all of this stuff that we're seeing here in chapter 4, is that and more, is fulfilled in us but we're still not told how we walk in the Spirit. It doesn't do my brother any good or my sister any good for me to just say to them, just, well, just do the best you can. You know, best of luck. Have at it. I, ho I, hope, you did, I hope you do better than I did. Folks, this is where we're at in our study concerning our walk. It's, 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 it's coming out here uh, in our study uh, in 1 Thessalonians, but I could, have, I could have talked about this a long time ago in, in Ephesians or Romans or Colossians or even Titus. The point I'm trying to make to you folks is that we... we uh, Truth changes our lives. We are transformed. Our lives, our very lives are transformed by the truth of God's Word. And we see, to our amazement, we, we suddenly, perhaps some, one day we, we come to the point to where that we realize that we're no longer the same person that we once were. Now, I, I don't know about you, but I, I know a lot of Christians that would stand before God and claim credit for that. Well, aren't you pleased with me, Lord? I, man, I studied more than others. I prayed more than others. I went to church more than others. I witnessed more than others. I led more people to, to you, Lord, than any, anybody in my life that I knew. And, and I've, I, you know, I, there's, there's, there's got to be something about me that's praiseworthy. I understand the Lord deserves all the honor and all the glory and all the praise. And I've read those words, Lord, but, but somewhere you know there's got to be something in me. Something. Some little thing. Some little thing. That triggered it all. And I'm here to tell you folks that that is simply not the truth. That's not the truth. This chapter, chapter 4, is jam-packed full of truth. God wants us to understand that he, we were set apart by God. That He works in us both the will and do of His good pleasure, that we stand before Him holy, without blame, spotless, that our sins are forgiven, cast as far as the east is from the west, buried in the depths of the sea, remembered no more. The Lord wanted David, the, the adulterer and the murderer, to, to know that that God had put away his sins. And I don't know how many Christians that I meet on a day-to-day -day basis who haven't even come to the point of settling, seeing the, the sin issue in their life settled before God forever. They're in a battle against sin. A constant battle. Oh, and someday that battle will be over. But until then, I've got to keep, you know, just hacking away, you know, at the, that old chipping away at this and that and, you know, trying to get rid of this 
awful thing in my life and trying to to bring into this to my life these other good things and and that's you know I've got to be the best Christian I, I can be you know God God that's what God's will is is that I be the best that I try the hardest and be the best Christian that I could possibly be that's got to be his will it's the only thing that makes sense otherwise why would he give us all these commands Why would he put them in the imperative mood? All the time forgetting that alongside all of these commands, interwoven all throughout those commands, all throughout the New Testament, continuously, the Holy Spirit goes out on a limb in so many ways to show us that we are not under law, but under grace. You've got to take these two things seriously, folks. On the one hand, God commands that we do good, not evil. On the other, He says that the flesh profits nothing. that no flesh will glory in His presence. The peace, the joy, the freedom that we can come to understand and know in Jesus Christ is beyond description. Why is that? I'll tell you why that is. Because He doesn't put a heavy yoke around us, our neck. He doesn't place more on us than what we can bear. He doesn't weight us down with the heavy burden of law-keeping, of making ourselves acceptable to God, keeping ourselves in a, in, in a state of, of acceptableness to God. That's not His mission. That's not His purpose. That's not the Holy Spirit's ministry. That's not the Holy Spirit's message. The Holy Spirit ministers a person more than things. We tend to look at the Holy Spirit as, as teaching us things, but He's preaching. He's, he's admonishing. He's teaching. He's encouraging. He's comforting. He's guiding, He's strengthening us to understand that to direct our attention to things above, not, not, to, not on, on things below, where our life is hidden with Christ and God. He ministers Christ. If... if all you have to do, folks, to tell whether or not some ministry is, 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 is pointing you in the right direction or not is to just take time to listen and take note of whether or not they are preaching Christ or self. It has been the desire, the intention, the will of this ministry from its inception to reflect that, that same principle of, of teaching in my viewers' lives. Our ministry, our message, our life is Christ. Christ is our life. Not I, but Christ. He lives His life in and through us. We can be thankful, grateful. We can praise God for His wonder, uh, His wonders. Of the the uh, I, I've, I've said this before, and I'll, I'll say it again. I, I might have said it on this channel. I don't know. If, if all we ever did in this life, if all you ever did 
was thank God for everything that He's done in your life, is doing and will do in your life. Give Him all the praise and the glory and the honor for, every, for who He is and what He's done, is doing and will do in your life. If that's all you did, you wouldn't have time to do anything else. Folks, I want you to understand the difference between Christ and self, law and grace, the flesh and the Spirit. I want you to understand that we stand before God fully righteous, as righteous as His Son because He imputed that righteous unto us. There is nothing that we can do to become more righteous than what we already are. Why do we love one another? Why? Why, why do I love you? Well, because God first loved me. Why do I do anything that I do? Because God has first done. If, if we get into that mindset of thinking that, that God will do something if we do something, that, that He's on the back end of it, we act first, and then God acts second, you know, first in our life is us, ourselves. We're first. Our will, our decisions, our actions. If we, just, if we just do the right thing, if we just behave properly, do everything that it, that, that it seems that God wants us to do, that, he, that it's, it appears to be His will in our life, if that's what we do, if we'll just do that, then God will, God will then react accordingly. Okay? And He will then do what He does in our lives. Folks, in your listen to me. Many of you out there, you know that that's not right. You know that that's backwards. You know that that's putting the cart before the horse. Okay? It's actually the other way around. We're going to continue on through our study in, in chapter 4 here. We're coming up to a passage that deals with our being taken out of this wretched body of sin and, and out of this world to be with one another forever. I want you to stay tuned to this channel because I'm going to have some interesting things to say about that. I love you all. I truly do. I appreciate all of your prayers, your continued messages of encouragement and, and your support. Until next time, this is Steve. Thanks for watching.